In Harm's Way is one of those movies that seems to have fallen through the cracks, like so many interesting, decent to good to great movies out there. There are a number of reasons why this movie may not have taken off aside from a lack of real marketing or theatrical expanded release or something along those lines, but the movie is 100% worth sitting through for even greater, better reasons. Hey everyone, I am Jan Mann. In Harm's Way has a bit of a interesting or perplexing history in terms of how it was eventually released. The movie has had a number of different titles. In Harm's Way seems to be the one that has landed for American distribution, but at some point in there, or in various, maybe in China or elsewhere, it was called. The Chinese Widow, which honestly seems like a much better, more appropriate title than In Harm's Way. That honestly feels or seems to be a title that may appeal more or in hopes that it would appeal more to North American audiences. And I'm going to go ahead and start with why I think, at least in part, aside from any marketing failures, why this movie may not have landed or have reached or have caught on among the mainstream audience. Because the movie does have some knocks against it. And those knocks honestly come within the first 20 minutes of the movie. So I can't stress to you enough to whatever you're thinking about the first 20 minutes, whatever flaws you might think it has, keep watching. If you're watching this review, despite spoilers coming up, keep watching this movie because I feel strongly it gets really good. Where this movie falters, though, in the opening 20 minutes or so is easily, number one, the CGI that's used. It depicts a American military taking off from an aircraft carrier, and it looks like something you would see on a 1990s TV show level CGI. It's like a step above something like Stephen King's The Langoliers or The Stand, if you saw those, where the CGI on those 90s miniseries was a little bit dodgy or cheap looking. It's somewhere on those levels there. Also something that I noticed very clearly and obviously, and some things that I learned about post-watching it that was pointed out to me by some military folks is that some of the imagery and uniforms and the like that you see in that opening 20 minutes aren't exactly true to the time period or what would be. For example, something I noticed right away was that this 1940s officer in the military, American military, had a very shaggy haircut, and I don't believe that in 1940s military service that that would have been allowed. Now, having said that, I feel those are little quibbles or nitpicks or criticisms for the overall movie and its effect. Once that pilot and his crew crash into that rural Chinese area and this Chinese woman and her child, daughter, and their, the woman's brother, they find the surviving pilot, played by Emil Hirsch. They take him in, even though they are a constant threat of the Japanese who are coming to look for these pilots and this crew, and they end up capturing, of course, the other crew members, and it's just basically verbally told that they're executed. So Emil Hirsch is the final or only survivor and he's being housed by this Chinese widow whose husband has passed battling the Japanese. She keeps this shrine to him and she, against all odds, against her own life being at risk, she takes in this American pilot and both she and her daughter take care of him and feed him and hide him and they all three develop this relationship. And what is so beautiful about this movie 
is this slow, quiet buildup and development of the relationship between these three. There isn't hardly anything that's spoken between the three. They don't understand each other. There is Chinese from the woman and the daughter and English from the American pilot. Yet nonetheless, they learn this way of communicating and you can beautifully watch as their relationship develops, how the Emile Hirsch character develops feelings first and foremost it appears for the woman and with then with the daughter. There is this absolutely climax for me, this beautiful moment where the Emil Hirsch character and the wife, the widow, they embrace. And it's like a love scene with just a brief kiss and the layered emotion that is on this woman's face, that's being conveyed singularly all at once in that moment is just, it's not only outstanding acting, but it's absolutely riveting and beautiful. All at once, she is portraying how she's falling for this foreigner, this American pilot, whom she can barely even communicate with, who is giving just a natural feeling of of affection and and concern and care for her and her daughter and willing to protect them as well as fighting that she has her husband whom she has this shrine to in her home yet she nonetheless feels these emotions for this man who it's basically inferred that is very much like her dead husband Also wrapped all around in that is just the struggle that she faces having to take care of her daughter with with, with no money and living in this shack in the middle of nowhere and trying to better her life for her and her daughter. It is an absolutely amazing performance from this Chinese actress. She absolutely steals the show. Emil Hirsch, meanwhile, is an actor who... Honestly, I haven't seen that many movies with him at this point, and the movies I have seen with him in them, it hasn't been anything all that remarkable in terms of his performance or character, but he does a good enough job in this role. He has these moments where he really plays off of the Chinese widow and her character very well. The actor who plays the Japanese commander or officer who is looking into where these American pilots and crew have landed and trying to capture them. He's very brutal and intimidating and and plays a a bad guy, Uh, a fierce one, an intimidating one, like I said, very, very well. Through those main characters of the widow, the daughter, the, the pilot, and the Japanese officer, it really pulls me in to that story and what is going to happen. If I do have another little nitpick about this movie, it would be that the daughter is a little bit feistier than she probably needs to be. That seems to be a modern trope was is to make the little girls as, as sassy as possible. And it's a trope that I'm honestly, I feel is a little played out in modern day movies, but she still does a pretty darn good job. And by the ending of this, which for some people is going to be another negative, it wasn't for me. At first it was because I did not want the movie to end this way. The movie ends on like a double somber note. Not only does something really bad, and for me it was unexpected, happened, but at the end it's another double whammy of something very somber happening. So this movie does not end on a positive note. And I was getting a little teary eyed at the end of this movie. I was mad at it, but at the same time, incredibly moved by it.